So Fred, you and I have a lot of gray hairs. So we, we remember back years ago when we really didn't have any definitive, any, any useful treatments that altered the disease course uh, of, of MS. And we're fortunate that things have changed uh, a great deal. So how in general is MS treated? So things have changed dramatically, but the, the principles of treating MS revolve around a treating the acute attacks, the flare-ups that we discussed earlier, and, and those need to be dealt with separately from treating the disease itself, what are called disease-modifying agents or disease-modifying therapies. This has been the big change over the last 20 years that we have agents that alter the course of the disease. They make it milder, they make the attacks less severe and certainly less frequent. Uh, and then, and also very important, treatment of the symptoms of the disease, because as we've discussed, MS can affect any part of the central nervous system and therefore it can produce symptoms that we've gotten to of things like pain and spasticity and bladder and all the different things that MS can do. We can intervene um, and, and make people's lives better um, by treating the individual symptoms, and that's separate from the disease-modifying therapies or the treatment of the acute attacks. And then there's lifestyle issues that we can, we can discuss as well, and that's all part of the sort of the comprehensive care of an MS patient is to take care of all aspects uh, of the illness and how it impacts their lives. Some people come in and, and they're reluctant to take medicine, and they, they want to know if a, if a particular diet can can fix their MS or if they, they lead healthy lives, can, can they protect them, their nervous systems that way? What, what do you tell them about diet, exercise, stuff like that? Well, eating, li living healthily is probably okay. It's just a matter of how you define healthy and that keeps changing from generation to generation as we learn more. So I think that, that one has to be, I, I mean a healthy diet is okay, whatever we think a healthy diet is at this particular point in time. Uh, there's no special diet that's ever been shown to have an effect on multiple sclerosis. There's lots that are out there. People have gotten on the internet, written books, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But nothing that we've seen that ever has been shown to alter the course of the illness. Exercise is a good idea, and and you know there's guidelines on how you should do it and how to be careful with it. But in general, it's good. Uh, not smoking is very important because that can alter the course of the disease. Um, vitamins and supplements unless you're deficient in say B12 or deficient in vitamin D, there's not much evidence to suggest that that's going to have any impact. Um, so one has to be careful of the source of their information and make sure that it's been properly vetted and properly tested. And as when we get into the discussion of disease modifying therapies, to develop these took extensive testing, you know, and years and enormous cost to come up with results that would satisfy the, the medical practicing community and scientific rigor and regulatory agencies so we can get these drugs out there and treat people. And that's one of the problems with these supplements and things that people get from health, health stores and pharmacies that, that haven't been vetted through the FDA and haven't been, none of them have been subjected to the rigorous scientific trials that are necessary to get a drug license. Right. They're all, there's two big problems. One is they're unproven and testimonials just don't count. And the second is they're unregulated so you actually don't know what you're getting in the bottle you buy off the shelf. You mentioned the internet before. One of the important things that's happened in my practice is I now counsel patients about the proper use of the internet because the internet is a fantastic tool with great information, but it's also completely unfiltered. And patients surfing the, the web find all kinds of stuff that's potentially harmful and, and certainly often not helpful. So I steer them to good good sites like the National MS Society at nmss.org or the Consortium of MS Centers, uh, mscare.org, for good sources of information. I think that's very important that it should be properly vetted.